Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be breaking down the stats of the upcoming 2024 summer event ship, the Vovin Obelisk Carrier. As always, chapters to each topic are listed down below. First up, let's go over availability. The Vovin Obelisk can be earned entirely for free by participating in 20 out of the 30 days of the 2024 summer event, which is running from July 2nd up through August 1st. Alternatively, there will be a Lobby buyout available. It will have a base cost of 1,000 Lobby Crystals, and it will scale down by 50 for each day of the summer event that you participate in. And heading into the stats, we have a hull modifier of 1.65, which is actually quite high. There's only two ships in the entire game that have a higher hull modifier than this, and that is the Sarcophagus Dreadnought Carrier at 1.675, and then the Herc Ved Crit at 1.7. So for those of you looking to do anything based around having a high hull capacity, this ship is going to very much appeal to you just for that alone. Then it has a shield modifier of 1.1, which is a bit average. For the weapon setup, this is doing the same thing as the original Obelisk. It has a 3-3 weapon setup, which is a bit underwhelming. You can still make it work, but it's never going to be as capable as one of the 5-3 the light deck carriers out there so that is already right there one of the, the biggest limitations for the ship is that it's retaining that really weak weapon setup device wise the vovin has four device slots for the bridge officers you have a lieutenant tactical lieutenant commander engineer with miracle worker a commander engineer with command which is pretty huge this is the very first event ship with a full specialization seat on it then we have an ensign science and a lieutenant commander universal now I think the, the spec combo here is good. The The Command America Worker is similar to what we saw on the Iwani earlier this year. And I know some people would think that this is a lot of engineering for this ship, but the fact that both specialization seats are on both the engineers means that you can just run those spec abilities instead of running a bunch of engineer abilities that aren't gonna do much for you. So the engineering doesn't really bother me here, but what does bother me is the hard decision you're going to have to make between making this lieutenant commander universal a science or tactical if you make it a tactical then you are left with just an ensign sci on the ship and if you make it a science you're left with just a lieutenant tactical on the ship so that is going to be a big factor that turns some people off of the ship because that is going to be quite limiting if you wanted to do fire at wheel three you wouldn't be able to do grav well one and if you wanted to do grab well one you wouldn't be able to do anything higher than a faw two so it's it's not the the best bridge officer set up here because of just that one universal seat and how the rest of the the setup is but i think you can still make something work on it console wise you have three tack five inch and three psi so with the five engineering that does mean you're going to be able to run up to seven isomags or hangar pet consoles once you take this up to T6X2. It's got a base turn rate of eight, impulse mod of 0 0.15, inertia of 40. So it is going to be a bit on the, the slower side for maneuverability. The power bonus is plus 22 aux, which means that you're going to be able to launch your, your pets out a bit more often. It is able to equip dual cannons, it has two hangar bays, of course, and by default, it is equipped with obelisk swarmers, but you can use whatever hangar pets on it that you want. It has the inspiration ship mechanic because it does have that full command seat. It has subsystem targeting and the mastery package is engineering carrier, which is plus hangar launch recharge speed, max hold capacity, energy damage resistance, max shield capacity, and then of course the trait. For the Admiralty stats, we have 53 inch, 31 psi, 21 TAC, and the special is minus 10% maintenance per psi ship or inch ship. So before I get into the accessories now, let's take a look at how this ship stacks up stat-wise against some of the other options out there. And heading over to the ship comparison, the Iwani is the ship that you should compare the Vovin against, but I do also have some flight deck carriers up on this comparison also, so that you can see the weaknesses that the Vovin has against the other engineering carriers out there. So starting off here with the Iwani, the Iwani does have a lower hull modifier at 1.45, but it does have a slightly higher shield mod than the Vovin. 
The mobility stats on the Iwani are also a little bit worse, but neither of these ships is going to maneuver that well at all. And for the bridge officer setup, the Iwani has a Commander Psy with Command, the Vovin is Commander Inge with Command, both have a Lieutenant Commander Universal, both have a Lieutenant Commander Inge with Merc Worker, both have a Lieutenant TAC, the Iwani has an Ensign Universal, and the Vovin has an Ensign Science. So if you're looking to set up a support tank platform, which is what you'd probably want to do with either of these ships, I do think that the Iwani is the better pick still. Even though the Vovin has this really high hull capacity, the Iwani's bridge officer setup is just a bit more flexible with the, the two universals and the commander science. That commander science means that you can do a Gravwell 3 if you wanted, and that's going to enable you to still also have the ability to run a fire will 3 if you wanted to do the Lieutenant Commander Universal as attack. Whereas on the Vovin, you have to pick between Fire at Will 3 and a Gravwell 1. So I think the Iwani is the more capable platform with its bridge officer setup. The weapons are the exact same on both, 3-3. Three, three. Both have two hangar bays, four device slots. Both of them have five engineering consoles, meaning that once you X2 them, you can get up to seven isomags or advanced hangar pet consoles. The Iwani only has one TAC console, though, versus the Vovin having three. And the Iwani does have five science consoles, meaning that if you wanted to do up to seven of the advanced science consoles, you could do that on the Iwani, whereas you couldn't do that on the, the Vovin. The Vovin only has three science console slots. So between the two, I think the, the Iwani is the more capable platform. The, the Vovin does have that higher hull capacity, which is going to be nice for those of you wanting to mess with like fractal integrity bleed. But the, the initial impression I have for the Vovin is that it's more of a mean tank ship to, to use. It's not going to be the most capable platform out there for tanking or supporting, but it would be a nice meme option for, for someone looking to do something a little bit different. And for both the Iwani and Vovin, uh, rather than having cruiser commands, they have access to subsystem targeting which is not a good trade-off for the Vovin. Okay, and a quick comparison now against the feature set that the flight deck carriers have. I'm not gonna do one-for-one -one comparisons against these flight deck carriers because most of these are much more expensive. Though to be fair, the, the Vovin Obelisk is only free for the month of July of 2024. And after that, it's going to be as expensive, if not more expensive than some of these more premium options because of the thousand lobby buyout. So, the the Vovin right now, you know, it's it's designed as a free ship, and free ships are always designed to be a little bit weaker. And the feature set that this one has is that in order to get the two hangar bays, it does have a weapons penalty. So you only have a 3-3 weapon setup, whereas with the flight deck carrier, you have two hangar bays, but no weapons penalty, meaning that you have eight weapons either in a 4-4 or 5-3 config. And for the obelisk, you also don't have cruiser commands. Instead, you get subsystem targeting, and that is substantially weaker than what the, the cruiser commands can offer. And for the flight deck carriers, they get the plus shield and threat ones, meaning that if you were looking to set up a, a tank build, having that threat cruiser command on a flight deck carrier is going to be a rather substantial boost. So the obelisk, it is still a very capable platform, but in the, the grand scheme of how carriers are balanced, these flight deck carriers have a very, very strong lead over the feature set that the obelisk carrier has. And heading over to the accessories, we have the console here, subspace fracture tunneling field. We are not sure how this ancient civilization managed to apply the principles of subspace travel to such a precise degree as to enable them to use it in battle. By creating a subspace fracture, the ship can tunnel towards a target, traversing a vast distance in what appears to be instantaneous movement due to the differences in space-time density between dimensions. What we do know is that this technology should not fall into the wrong hands. This console provides a substantial passive boost to whole regen and can of course be equipped on any ship. So this is a teleport console and that's pretty much all we know about it right now. So. We'll have to wait to, to see if there's any other parts to this console once we have it next week. 
And this console is part of a set. So if you equip this at the same time as the omnidirectional antiproton beam ray, the obelisk subspace drift warp core, and the reactive antiproton cascade emitter, it will get you some additional perks. So that three piece has been around for a while, and this is adding a fourth piece to the set, which will create an obelisk swarmer every one second with up to eight of them on flight at the same time. So it's an extra 1.3 bays of the, the hangar pets of the, the obelisk swarmers. So if you have that four piece on, it's like having three bays of the, the swarmers on your ship. Now, I know some people are probably excited to, to mess around with that set, but I would temper your expectations. You have to go in and pick up two of the pieces from the, the Sphere of Influence mission. So you have to run that two times on whatever characters you want that set on. So that is an omnidirectional set beam array, meaning that you cannot run this alongside any other set beams like the Pavin. And then you have the Obelisk Subspace Rift Warp Core, which is only a warp core. There's no singularity core. And again, if you're running this, you can't run like your Disco Warp Core. So there is some limitations to that set. And then you also have the, the console, the, the other console in that set, is off of the T5 Advanced Obelisk Carrier, which is on a Lobby ship, because this Advanced Obelisk is a Lobby ship that cost, I think it's like 800 Lobby. Let's take a look here. Um, there's not many of these that pop up on the Exchange. There probably will be a few of them popping up with this uh, the set popping up, but yeah, that's 800 Lobby for, for a T5 ship, and it's not a great ship either. It's also a 3-3 weapon setup, not a great bridge officer setup there either. And if I look for Advanced Obelisk, there's not even one on the Exchange. So I'll search there again, but there's not even an Advanced Obelisk on the Exchange right now. They, they cost 800 Lobby or 640 during a 20% off sale. So in order to run that four piece, you are making quite a few sacrifices and spending quite a bit to get it. So yes, there's a four piece bonus, but realistically, you're probably not going to want to run any like two, three or four piece set with the limitations we have here. And the starship trait is reconstructive conversion wave, activating any whole healing bridge officer ability or any command bridge officer ability causes your ship to emit a five kilometer wave of anti-proton damage. For each foe damaged by this wave, you and your pets will be granted a temporary heal over time effect that restores a small percentage of your max health while active. This effect may only be triggered once every few seconds. This heal over time effect can only affect yourself and up to 12 of your nearest pets, but may be granted to any pet type without restriction. This trait will only trigger while in combat. So if you're looking to keep your pets alive, that is a trait that may be of interest to you. And the pets here are just the same old ones we've had for, for the past decade, the, the Obelisk Swarmers. So you have the three varieties of them that you can go in and pick up. These pets really are not anything that special from, from what I can recall. Um, I believe these work better with Ordinate Assault rather than the Superior Area Denial. So if you did want to run these, you'd probably want to look into that. But overall, from what I recall, the, the performance of these pets isn't great, and you'd probably want to run some of the other pets out there like Toe Douge or Type 7s instead. And final thoughts. For the ship itself, I'm really not that impressed. Yes, the whole modifier is really high, and you're going to be able to play around with Fractal Integrity Bleed on this thing, but the, the stats overall just really aren't that great. A 3-3 weapon setup just is really weak in the, the current state, especially on an engineering carrier. When we have flight deck carriers out there that have 5-3 and 4-4 weapon setups and also still have two hangar bays, it just feels really bad to get an engineer carrier that has a 3-3 weapon setup. So the, this ship, you know, like I was saying, any ship can be made to be effective and you can certainly make this into a viable platform. But if you have the resources to obtain some of those better ships out there like a flight deck carrier, I think you're going to have a much better experience for that carrier playstyle. For the accessories here, I want to see more about the console. Teleports are always a bit interesting, so I want to see exactly how this one works before I make any final judgment there. The Starship trait really didn't look that impressive to me. We already have a few different traits out there that can help keep pets alive. 
So we'll have to see the, the numbers on that one, but I don't expect that to, to really be a game changer for, for hangar pets. Overall, you know, it's a free ship. If you can get it for free, definitely get it. If you are in a position where you have to buy it out, I would only do so if you are really interested in the, the ship or the accessories it has. And I would say that overall, if you miss the, the summer event, I'd probably just wait for it to go to the mud store instead. A thousand Lobby crystals is worth like 200 bucks. So I, I would rather just wait for it to go into the mud store a couple of years from now and spend like 40 bucks to get it rather than burn that much Lobby. So that, that's my thoughts. Again, I'm not too impressed with this one. It's, it's going to be a meme tank platform with that high hole modifier, but once you have access to better ships, that this thing is going to really fall far behind for you. That's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. Sorry for any audio issues. Been dealing with bronchitis and trying to get some recordings done has been fun with all of the, uh, the coughing and related stuff going on. So again, thank you for tuning in and I will see you guys around.